Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing a pretty sweet looking red green painter's servant decklist. This decklist comes courtesy of Callum Smith who is a painter enthusiast and all round lovely human being and he was kind enough to send me his list and here it is. So for those who are unfamiliar, painter's servant, this is a card that when it enters the battlefield you choose a colour, all cards basically become that colour including cards in your opponent's library. So when we grindstone our opponent, it will mill the top two cards of their library. If they're the same colour, we'll mill their in they'll go again and again and again. So basically we just mill their entire library with grindstone. That's like the main way we can kill. Normally this deck is sort of a mono red deck, but we are trying a new card that you've probably seen a fair bit on the channel so far, and that is Breakout. So this is look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them. If it has mana value two or less, put it onto the battlefield and gains haste. Or you can put it into your hand if it's if it's got higher mana value. So basically what we're doing is our breakout can dig for Ignoble Hierarchs, which we're using instead of Simeon Spirit Guys because of its use with Breakout, and also the fact that it can fix us for green mana as well. But then it can also find all of these 16 cards here. So our Painters, which is the thing we need to win the game most of the time. We can also get Morlock, which is a nice piece of removal that scales as the game goes on. And we also have Goblin Welder. Now this with Haste that we get from the breakout is very tasty because we get to do this and immediately like weld in our painter or our grindstone or possibly a chaos defiler which we can put into our graveyard using goblin engineer another creature that in the sort of mid to late game when we've got some spare mana if we break this out we can immediately start activating this and do some really gross things because normally you get this window where you play your goblin your opponent has a turn to try and do something about it and then things go out of control but we can just go out of control straight away so that's kind of what we're doing there. We've also got Four Favor of the Mirror Breaker, just a classic in Painter Decks. It's just so good here. Putting stuff in our graveyard, generating some card advantage by getting two bodies out of this and starting to copy our Morlocks or our Chaos Defilers or even Engineers and Welders are also fine to copy too because we can have multiple welds going on. So yeah, just an absolute standout card that's really put Painter on the map. Um, obviously this card's been around for a while, but uh, in legacy terms and in terms of how long I've been playing Magic, this still feels relatively new. Um, aside from that, we've got a little bit of a package to go, I say a package, we've got one Solgrad Lantern to go with our Urza Saga, which is another way that we can win the game here, it's making big constructs, this also tutors for our grindstone. Then we have a Frexion Dragon Engine, this is like a nice card advantage option we can put in the graveyard with our engine, sir. sorry, engineer, and we've got a couple of Veil of Summers because they're in green, so we can use this to f sort of stave off some discard spells, but also... Every spell is going to be blue once we play our Painted Servant because we want our Red Blast and Pyroblast to be one mana counter spell slash Vendicate. So yeah, that's pretty much the deck. Our mana base has got two Mountains in, two Tigers, and we have one Badlands in case we want to be hard casting this Chaos Defiler. Obviously Ignoble Hierarch really helps with that too. We've got a bunch of Ancient Tunes so you can power stuff out, and yeah, that's pretty much the deck. Cyborg-wise, we've got another as a Saga target in Pith and Needle and Haywire Might. We've got some powerful green cyborg cards that you normally don't get in the sort of mono red painted decks. So we've got Choke, which is a horrible thing to play against, so pretty happy to have that on our side. Carpet Flowers is a nice way to get through some of the wastelands and hate you get that way from Delver and Death Shadowy, that sort of deck. Then we also have Pick a Poison. This is an interesting flexible removal spell. I've not been hugely impressed by this, but in some of the decks that I've been playing, we tend to want very, very specific things answered. Because this is usually really bad about answering artifacts. Because most artifact decks have a slew of artifacts, so you get their worst artifact. But when it comes to enchantments and creatures with flying, this is going to be pretty good. We're pretty cold to Merc Tides if we don't have our Pyroblast. I can just swing through the sky and get us unless we've got a Defiler going. So Pick Your Poison makes some sense there for me as well. Also, Null Rod is a thing that some of the... Like Null Rod and Grafticus Cage are things that Delver decks are picking up at the moment. So this helps us versus those... So the actual destroying an artifact will be useful out of the sideboard here. Uh, we've got some Graveyard Hate in Fairy Macabre. And we've got a couple of Pyrokinesis in case we need a bit more removal. And another relatively new card here, for Mindshake Online at least, is Canoptex Scarab Swarm. A 4 mana 1-1 flyer. When it enters a battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. For each artifact or land card exiled this way, create a 1-1 one -one insect with flying. So we can use this to... This isn't for like the graveyard decks where they're trying to smash down some scary thing like a grizzle brand or an arc of cruelty or whatever this is for like the fairer decks that use their graveyard so the slower decks are trying to make like murktai regents or whatever or uro that sort of jazz that's what where this is going to shine and we can sort of rebuy it several times because we're going to be welding a lot here right 
We're almost goblin tribal, really. We've got welders, engineers, hierarchs, and favor of the mirror breaker. Yeah. But yeah, that's the deck. I'm quite excited to play this one. I do enjoy playing painted servant decks. I think they've got a lot of play to them. So hopefully we can utilize that amount of play and get some nice victories going. Remember to like and subscribe and let's get welding. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? All right, our first hand with the deck is not a pleasant one. This Ancient Tomb is not going to help us out, so let's mulligan it. Yeah, I think this is fine. We probably want to lead out on the Hierarch so that we can't be just wastelanded off mana. I don't think we're going to need double Morlock, although do we need this Welder right now? It is just a Lightning Bolt that... Uh, sorry, a Lightning Rod where people want to remove it. Also, our opponent is uh, Mafuz Van Gogh, who's famous for playing Dredge, which means... What does that mean? We're not going to have to necessarily worry about getting Wastelanded here. So perhaps we can keep this Morlock. But we might want to be Morlocking our own thing here. So this is kind of a tricky one. I think we're just going to throw back one Morlock for now. Because the reason you might want to Morlock your own things is to mess with your opponent's... Yeah, so you can mess with your opponent's bridge from below. All right, so we want a Tiger here. Let's jam down this Hierarch. And pass the turn. So we have a breakout next turn, if we want it. We could break out and weld something if we find, like, our Great Furnace. Another welder. Interesting. Um, not being able to play this Hierarch is a little bit annoying. So we could jam welder plus Hierarch here. Or we could just jam the breakout and sort of see what we, we hit with this. I think I... I came here to cast Breakout, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Chaos to Fire is something we can put into our hand. But we could just have this noble, Ignoble Hierarch. And this allows us to play out another Ignoble Hierarch, I think is fine. We just want to get our mana underneath us, since we missed a land drop. So that Breakout works out, more or less. So we're going into turn 3, potentially with 5 mana. So we could hard cast a... Uh, Chaos Defiler, but we did just put one on the bottom of our library. So unlikely we're going to find that one until we shuffle our library. Otherworldly Gaze, as expected from our opponent. Let's see what they put. We're going to leave their graveyard popped out, because that's going to be probably the most important graveyard this game. Like, ours is obviously relevant with things like Welders, but we're more about getting an eye on what our opponent's doing and how we can interrupt that. Right, so they have a bridge from below. That will allow them to start making some zombies. If they can put some creatures into play. Careful study. So they've only got a thug here. And they've hit a troll. And they've hit another troll here. So they've got the Duskana build. So no creatures in the graveyard right now. Uh, does this fight... No, it only fights a creature in opponent control. That's really important to remember. Alright, so we're going to see some more dredging here. Yep. Okay, no freebies yet. Uh, how can we get rid of one of our creatures? I thought we might be able to actually fight here. But that doesn't work. We can fight when our opponent gets a creature. That's not what's happening here. So I think we are just playing out this welder first. We can attack for three here. Get our exotic triggers. And we'll jam ourselves a friendly little goblin welder. I don't think we're playing this Morlock. The idea is if our opponent makes some things, we can then use our Morlock to fight and make our creature lose. Oh, that was a very good dredge. Triple Narcomoebas. All right, we might be dead this turn. We might not get a chance to do anything here. So they also have the Ox of Agonis, so they can at least draw three more cards, which should put the rest of their deck into their graveyard, right? Six, six, six. That'll be two cards left. But if they want the Duskana in play, they have to be careful about the number of cards. If you're unfamiliar with Duskana, I'll just pull up for you. So when it ends the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control with base power and toughness two. And so that's basically going to be all their zombie tokens, draw them a card for each zombie. So they have to be careful. Yep, so they're doing this now. They've only got the one bridge, actually. That's not too bad. But this is going to draw them three cards, which is then going to dredge them some more. And if they find the anger here, they will all have haste. All right. They've got a pox walkers. They're going to be doing some cabal therapy stuff for us here. Or they're going to crack the Colosseum. They are. So if they can find the 
All right, they're just discarding cards from hand. So maybe they have the anger in hand. There it is. Yeah. Okay, so these will have haste now. So they can sacrifice this Duskana if they want to. No, they're just going to sacrifice one of the zombies and then the Poxwalkers will trigger. And then they can start sacrificing the Poxwalkers. These are going to have haste. How many bridges do we have now? One bridge, two bridge, three bridge, four bridge. So how many Cathedral Therapies? One more, two more, three more. So they're going to have... 4, 8, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and they're all going to get plus 3, plus 3. So we are dead here. Alrighty. We don't have the hard graveyard hate that you'd want, like the ley line type effects, but we can phone macabre here, and that's reasonable. I don't really want choke here, even though it can sometimes do stuff. Canoptex, Skyrim Swarm, also handy. Pithy Needle can name Cephalo Colosseum, which sometimes is relevant. This is something we can think about. Grindstone can randomly sort of get us there when you wouldn't expect it to, which is an interesting way. Um, so what are we looking at boarding out here? Pyrokinesis to kill our own creatures at instant speed is also a thing. So I'm kind of down with this. I think that's going to be better than the Morlocks. So just strip those out straight away, and that gives us two more to find. Is the Chaos Defiler a bit slow? Could be. Um, Dragon Engine... Like we want artifacts to weld in and out because then our welders get to do something. Pyroblast, actively good here. Uh, how do I feel about Veil of Summer? I don't think this is a Veil of Summer matchup. We can defend against a Cabal Therapy, but I don't think that's where we're picking our fight. So I reckon this looks alright to me. So yeah, we can Pyrokinesis away our own creatures to remove their bridges at instant speed. Not how you envision playing the Pyrokinesis when you put it in your deck, but that's what we've got here. Let's see if we can keep a nice 7 here. Okay, this is what I would describe as a nice 7. Two pieces of uncounterable graveyard hate. And if our opponent's got something like a ley line of Sanctity, we don't care about that because it's the Fairy Macabre. It'd have to be... Like, uh, what's the one mana... There's a one mana artifact that stops cards in your graveyard being targeted. I can't remember what it's called. It's from the original Ixalan set. So we want a Tiger here. Let's get our little friend in. All right. Hopefully they haven't seen this particular build of Painter before, so they're unlikely to name the right thing with a, a blind Cabal Therapy. A careful study. All right, so I'm going to put some cards in their graveyard, and then we can see about doing stuff to them. All right, so we can exile these both with Fairy Macabre. What is this next turn going to look like for us? A Goblin Welder. Mm. If we break out, we're more likely to find something useful here I think so green red All right we have a welder not really the one we wanted but we'll take it so this can attack for one or two sorry because we have the hierarch so let's do that let's get rid of these two cards also breakout can find us a fairy macabre and put it into our hand because we, we don't put the larger creatures into play so that's a really good reason why we're running the Fairy Macabre and the Breakout. I've run that in some Jun decks before, like last week, or the week before, or whenever I last played a Breakout deck. I've been running these in the sideboard, because it's just a way of digging six to find an important hate piece. Alright, let's see if our second Fairy Macabre can buy us even more time. A Cabal Therapy. Right, they're going to name Fairy Macabre, I believe. But I don't think we pitched this to get rid of these. It can help for Ox of Agonis. Yeah, they named Fairy Macabre, sure. Alright, deck. Mana source? Not a mana source. Um, what are we doing here? I'm really struggling with mana on this one today. Let's try this Goblin Engineer. We don't have a, an artifact to weld. So what are we going to put into our graveyard here? We can put a Soul Guide Lantern in and just start doing that. Or we can just have this Canoptex Scarab Swarm. That seems like a better shout here, doesn't it? And we don't get to play anything else here. I don't believe our opponent's going to discard our Painted Servant, so we'll just bash for two. Get a little bit of chip damage in. And then next turn we can start weldering the Canoptex Scarab Swarm using our Painted Servant as our artifact. I don't believe our opponent is playing a build with Force of Wills and Dazes in like they have done in the past, but I could be wrong. Cephalic Colosseum, that's going to be deadly later on down the road. Well, hopefully later on the, down the road. It could be deadly now, and that would be really bad for us. Okay, deck. Another welder. 
Hmm. Um, we'll name blue, I think, to, to make sure our pyroblast is extra good. And then our engineer can attack for two. And as soon as our opponent has something that we don't want them to have in their graveyard, we can just put the Canoptex Scarab Swarm into play. So we just keep this welder up the whole time. Maybe at some point we'll even draw some mana. It's a wild idea, but oh my god, there it is. Okay. So now we can go get this favor of the mirror breaker going. Attack with his engineer. So engineer can tutor for any artifact to the graveyard. Can only return CMC three or great uh, CMC three or less cards. So obviously it's great for doing the painted stuff, but when we have big targets like Defiler or Canoptic Scarab Swarm, we don't really get to enjoy those privileges. Pretty happy to ditch these two welders. If we find a grindstone, we might be able to win next turn. Red Blast, very good here. We will be binning these two welders. Um, okay, I think we go to attacks first. I think we just attack with this for three. We will get ourselves another a, a treasure here, so we can at least uh, play this Fable and also get our Red Blast as the thing we get to cast. All right, let's bring another one of these. So if our opponent's got something like a Chain of Vapor, they can always try and bounce one of our artifacts and then try and get the other one with another Chain of Vapor or something like that. Hercules Recall, bounce them both, so it might force action on the Canoptex Scarab Swarm. A Chain of Vapor on our little friend there. Counter target, blue spell. A Stern Dismissal. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I think we swap this painter with this Scarab Swarm. Just take some cards out of their graveyard. So we get two friends with this. And our opponent's got less fuel for their Colosseum. They've got less fuel for an Ox of Agonis. They don't have that Cabal Therapy. So they could... Okay, they didn't cast another Worldly Gaze. We've got Lions Eye Diamonds, which we didn't see in game one. They could definitely spam a bunch of stuff in our face. Right, basic Mountain. Right, we've got enough damage to effectively kill our opponent next turn, so they're going to have a big turn. A breakthrough where X equals 1. So what this is going to do is put a bunch of cards in their graveyard and leave them with the ability to cast one like draw-discard effect, like a careful study, or another breakthrough. So they could be dredging a whole bunch this turn. Alright, so Narcan Weaver gone. Okay, so they've got the Lion's Eye Diamond, and that's going to power out the Faithless Looting here. Um... Yeah, so they, they do red, so when they find an Oxygonus, they can go here, in theory. All right. That's not a good enough dredge, I don't believe. All right, they've still got the Colosseum, actually, so they've got a little bit more action. Two, three. Yep, so they, they didn't use the Cephalic Colosseum for mana for the Faithless Looting, so they could have kept up the red for the Oxygonus, but obviously they wanted to keep milling so I think it makes sense to do it that way. All right. Um, do I want this Pitha Needle? It's certainly within the realms of things that are tempting me. What will we cut if we play a Pitha Needle, though? Is it one of our grindstones? Could be. I don't think we want the chokes here. But I think a Pitha Needle for Cephalic Colosseum is pretty reasonable. Like, we're rarely getting that from our... As a saga, because we're going to want the Soul Guide Lantern instead, but it's still a thing we can draw in our deck. And if we draw the Soul Guide Lantern, then we get something else we can add. So, what does this hand do? Okay, turn one saga, we get turn three graveyard hate. Our opponent is playing Lion's Eye Diamond. Is turn three graveyard hate good enough? Mm, but we can do Urza Saga, Pithing Needle on um, Separate Colosseum. I don't like this hand, but it does do something. And we have Graveyard Hate. If our opponent's got a slower hand, where they're trying to play through our hate, then we can at least do that. Okay, if our opponent's just got a super light and fast hand like this, then we might just be cooked. All right. So the reason they probably wouldn't go there is because they're trying to... Ooh, this Pyroblast is really tempting, isn't it? So if we play out the Urza Saga and the Pithing Needle, like if they crack this and just cast a red spell, we're going to feel really bad for holding up this blast. So I think we are just playing out the Saga and the Pithy Needle on 
the Cephalic Colosseum. Why you wouldn't crack it there is probably because you might have a Cephalic Colosseum and you want to get that Colosseum out of your hand. Colosseum. By getting the Colosseum into play, it means that you're just banking three dredge activations later on, as well as getting all these other things in your hand. Okay, they just have another worldly gaze. That's the thing that we could have red blasted. Ashen Rider, Cabal Therapy, Otherworldly Gaze. All right, so if they've got another land, they can start flashing back a whole bunch of Otherworldly Gazes. But we do have... All right, so they're going to do this. Oh, they're not cracking the LED in response. That's interesting. If they crack the LED in response for blue, they could flash back one of the Otherworldly Gazes first. Okay, they discarded a Stinkweed Imp. So they're going to get a go at dredging this. Obviously, they could still go now with something like a Faith is Looting. All right, we survived a turn here. Do I want to make a Saga Construct, or do I want to have access to a Red Blast to stop things getting out of hand? That's not an easy choice to make. I think we just want a Red Blast so that our opponent can't get too out of hand right now. Red Blast can also blow up a Nark Amoeba in a way that means they don't get necessarily all the value they want from it. Alright, let's pop out the graveyard again. Some bridges in there, some other bits and pieces. So they know there's a Soul Guy Lantern coming off of this saga. Okay, what have they got there? All right, it's going to be the Ox of Agonis here. All right. They've just got one Dredger. But Dredgers find more Dredgers as a general rule. Okay, they found another Stinkweed Imp. There's a Nark Amoeba. There's one Nark Amoeba coming in. We can't Red Blast this. But we can... We can Red Blast it now, but they're going to sacrifice it before we get any option to do anything here. And then they're going to have this Ox of Agonis to try and batter us down with. Which is, you know, going to be pretty good, to be honest. Alright, so they're sacrificing all of these. They're sacrificing Ox of Agonis here. They're going to replay it in a second. Which is not really where I want to be. Yeah, we don't have a hard enough graveyard hate like a Ley Line here. They name Fairy Macabre. We do not have one. So they've still got one red floating and the Volcanic Islands. They can just put this Ox of Agonis right back on the stack and dredge a whole bunch more. Have uh, they got any dredges left? They don't, but they can bring back the troll just as a bit... Uh, sorry, not the troll, the ox as a big thing to then discard stuff away. They also have the uh, dread return, so they can just bring back an Ashen Rider, take out our Eza Saga, and then we are pretty done. Oh, wow, they found an anger. Okay, yeah, we're just dead. Oh, they did have a dredge that I missed. Okay. Um, yeah, they should kill us. I don't think we can beat this. Our opponent is a good enough player. They're not going to miss the fact that they can just... Get this Ashen Rider and do all this stuff. Yeah, I think we call it there. Yeah, that was a case of being a matchup where if you've got, like, really firm graveyard hate, you know, like your ley line type stuff, then this is a matchup that is generally quite easy. But if you don't have that, like, we, we're sort of indexing into these fairy macabres and stuff, it can be a little trickier, uh, as you saw there. And we kept up our Red Blast, but if we hadn't have kept up our Red Blast and just kept up the Ancient Tomb to do a as a Saga here, that's still not going to be good enough. So, not great for us there, but it's a kind of polarizing matchup where it kind of, most of the time is going to be really one-sided one way or the other. All right, let's go to round two. Uh, this is just an as a Saga hand, which is a fine way to play Magic the Gathering. And if it goes a bit, a bit awry... We can pivot into doing some engineer stuff. Mishra's Bauble. Right, that means possibly um, like a Delver style deck, especially with their target in themselves. That means they have fetch lands. Yep, there's the fetch land. They wanted to see if they were playing their fetch land or their non fetch land based on what the top card of the library was. All right. Let's play this. Didn't really want this Fraction Dragon Engine in our hand. But uh, it is what it is. All right. So now we have... We could just play out this Engineer. Or we could just hold up Red Blast. I think I'm going to hold up Red Blast. And I want to have this Lotus Petal around. Because it lets us play around days in the future. And it also pumps up our Urza Saga tokens. Which in the Delver matchup, Urza Saga tokens tend to be pretty good in game one. Game two, you know, you're going to get meltdowns And they're not as reliable. But game one, they can usually get the job done. A ponder. We're not going to aggressively pyroblast this because, like I said, we want the Lotus Petal in, in play to pump up our as uh, a saga, especially if our opponent is playing some Orcish Bowmasters or something in their deck. Having the ability to play through those is good. Okay, a wasteland. It doesn't matter. Okay. Goodbye, our land. 
Alright. A goblin welder. I am happy to play this one out. This is force of willable for sure. Alright, there is the force of will. Do I snap off this red blast to push through our welder and potentially turn on a daze? Or do I just let this go and try and do some stuff with the engineer? So what is this welder going to find us? We could find the Chaos Defiler uh, next turn by playing the engineer and just start welding in the Defiler and that's probably lights out. Hmm. Come on then. We will need an artifact. Is there any problem with this line? But I'll take this nice two for one. Our opponent wouldn't force of will a Goblin Welder if they had a removal spell in hand. Now if they get a daze here, then sure they get a daze. That sets them back. Merc Tide's a little bit further off the menu. Alright, we're just in with the Welder. A successful Pyroblasting. Or Red Elemental Blasting, even. Okay, opponent. What are you up to? A Wasteland. Okay, that doesn't do anything to us right now. I'll take that. A Great Furnace, you say. That is a very tempting card to play, but it's going to be awkward in the face of the Wasteland. So we could deploy... We could deploy the Engineer around a daze, or we could deploy the Phyrexian Dragon Engine. They didn't daze the Welder, so I don't believe they've got the daze. I think I'm going to deploy the Dragon Engine. And I just hold up this Welder. I think the ability to weld our Phyrexian Dragon Engine is going to be more important than... It's going to be dressed down? Could be. I think having the ability to weld the Dragon Engine is going to be more important than attacking for one damage. Seeking of the Beast. Yep, it's a pretty good one. Uh, Lightning Bolt and Delver of Secrets. Okay. Those are some pretty good cards. A Daze. They did have a Daze. Alright, well we're not paying for that one, unfortunately. Alright, that's sad. We're going to lose our Goblin Welder as well to this Lightning Bolt. But they can't play the Delver and the Lightning Bolt, so there's a real cost there. The thing about them, I'd probably just let the Dragon Engine resolve. Just bolt the Welder. And then worry about dealing with our thing later on. A Merc Tide can deal with it. Obviously, we don't know what's in their hand, so we can't make the correct evaluations there. All right, are they going to waste down our Ancient Tomb as well? They are. Sure. Ignoble Hierarch. Interesting. I think the play for us here is getting a Tiger and deploying the Goblin Engineer. We'll sandbag this Great Furnace until the time comes. We've got another day's. They do have another day as well as his trousers. All right, fair enough, opponent. Again, an awful lot of value with those dazes. And we're a little bit of mana away from casting this dragon engine from the graveyard. Sorry, unearthing it, not casting it. But once we unearth this, we can refill our hand. Thundering Falls, sure. So our opponent is almost uh, certainly only playing like one trop for this, and they're not really intending to cast this very often. I think there's room for the Thundering Falls and multiple trops. Um, okay. Let's play out this Hierarch. Then we'll deploy this Great Furnace. So next turn, we can unearth our Phyrexian Dragon Engine and just draw a new hand. And hopefully, that'll be pretty good. We'll also get to swing for six. Which is a reasonable chunk, but our opponent is in Merktide Regent stage of the game now, so I'd like to find some Red Blast, please. Okay, Ponder, no Merktide Regent this turn. That's excellent news for us. There's that volcanic island we saw before. All right, we're going to get to unearth our dragon engine if we want to this turn. Okay, so we might as well play this hierarch first. Get the value. And then we can just smash this uh, unearth thing in and we'll attack for uh, eight. Red, 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 and two. Let's draw some more cards. Okay, uh, I like these cards. We've got a lightning bolt. They need to do it before the exalt, uh, exalt trigger hits. All right, we get a nice swing for eight here. And we've gassed back up. We've got an answer for Merc Tide. We've got a breakout that we can follow up with as well. Pretty nice. We will be exiling the Dragon Engine here, though. So we don't get to bring that back for future card advantage. Like you can when you just constantly welder it. But that ship has sailed. There is a polluted delta from our opponent. We're going to see a Merc Tide this turn. No, green and blue. So we're going to see the Druid. All right. We should be able to beat this in combat for a few turns at least due to the Exalted on our little friends. 
But all that one for one trading we did has sort of been undone by the drawing three cards we just got to do. So let's go green and red. Let's break out. A force of negation. Pitching days. I think this is worth red blasting then. This is our only answer to Merc Tide right now, is anything. If they had a Merc Tide, I'm sure they would have played it last turn because it's just so back breaking. A brainstorm. Okay. So they're looking for. What are they looking for? Like, Days doesn't do it because we've got loads of mana to pay. All right, Breakout. What would you like to do? A Morlock. Hmm, that doesn't feel like where I want to be right now, does it? Because we play this Morlock out. And we fight here. Our creature's going to die. We don't have to fight. It's an optional. But we could play this 2-2 two -two and attack for 4. Or we could play this Painted Servant and work towards our combo. I think I'll work towards the combo here. So we'll name blue. So if this attacks, it'll attack for 1, 2, 3. And it'll be a 3-5. So we will beat them in combat. A very aggressive little Scarecrow. Right, now we'll play our Reza Saga. That's another problem for our opponent to worry about. And they brainstormed last turn, so they have to draw one of those brainstorm cards as well. A Preordain. Their quest injury is getting big. So we can't really attack anymore. Because they can just sort of rebound our Pain of Servant. But once we get some Urza Sagas churning, we'll be fine. Because we have some big boys that they'll have to deal with because they're only on six life. And then we can follow up with the grindstone kill as well. All right. Oh, they're coming in. That's exciting. All right, I'll take the four. I think our opponent's about to play a Merktide Regent. That's what this tells me. No. An Unholy Heat on our Pain of Servant. Sure. That is way better for us than a Merktide Regent there. All righty deck. What are we up to? Another Urza Saga. Yeah. I'm down. We're going to have our graveyard popped out this, this game because that's going to be quite an important zone for us. Um, I would like to attack for two here with one of our disposable hierarchs. This is a third of our opponent's current life total. And there's also the fear of breakout now. They think, oh, okay, we could have a hasty threat at any moment. So they might have to take some risks or they might play KG. A brainstorm, sure. They're questing druid. Okay, they've had enough. Excellent. Power of Urza Saga in game one. Unfortunately, we're not in game one anymore. So this is a very good matchup for Carpet Flowers. Pick Your Poison is going to be a one-manner answer to a bunch of their things. Choke, also going to be pretty good here. Um, what do we want here? Pith and Elon Wasteland is probably too late. Canoptex Scarab Swarm, pretty good. Pyrokinesis, also pretty good. Like This whole bunch of stuff looks pretty tasty. I'm not convinced we want these Veil of Summers. Like They can force through some of our spells. But they're more for like the scam matchups where we also need to protect our hand. Um, how good are Morlocks? Is the question here. And would I prefer like this whole package of things? Alternatively, I think we can probably trim on a grindstone. I don't think that's our fight. And that means we can probably trim a painter, possibly two. Like our pyroblasts are already good, so we don't need to make them better. Um, what about engineers and welders? Ah, dear, oh dear. How convinced am I by these Morlocks? Are they better or worse than Pyrokinesis? Is another question to consider as well. I want the Defiler. Definitely. We definitely want the Fables. We want our card advantage so we can kind of deal with it last time. Trade one for one, then gas up again. Five cards is so many. So in terms of what we have here, what are the best cards we can bring in? Right now. So probably these and I think Pick Your Poison is better for us than Choke here. Choke's more for like the slower decks. I would quite like a Canaptex Scarab Swarm over a Morlock. I think that's pretty reasonable. And then it's a case of do you want Pyrokinesis or do you want Morlock? Pyrokinesis... Mm, I think we want the Morlock. Right? Like this trades with Delver all the time and it can trade with Channeler by just putting one extra mana in. I think that's where I'm going to go here. I don't do want Pith and Needle for Wasteland. Like, if we're fetching it, we've kind of already gone past that thing. Obviously, we can have it um, in our starting hand, but I think we're just best off like this. So we, we have answers to a Null Rod or a Graft Digger's Cage if we want it as well. Okay. Goblin Welder. What a great card. Let's put that into play. 
And we'll play the Saga Lantern second, I think. Because that just gives us a way of curtailing Merktide regions and things. Right, a ponder from our opponent. If they want to daze our welder, how do we feel about that? We also have um, fetch lands, so we can go and find our one of commercial district to surveil and get a little bit of card selection. Or put something really cool in the graveyard with a goblin welder. Right, so they're balling. And it's over to us. A Morlock. Okay, I'm happy to play this welder out. This is certainly days worthy. All right, we're just in. Okay. Interesting. I probably thought about that for a while, which suggests to me they might have a counter spell. But you can't read too much into stuff like that, really. All right, a Kraken is scalding Tarn. Are we going to see a Thundering Falls, or are we going to see... Nope, just Tropical Island. Um, no further play. Interesting. So we're probably looking for a Seek the Beast in our opponent's end step here. So we could try and cheese our opponent with a Surveil into something really useful. But the chance of that hitting are quite low, and I think the upside of getting an Urza Saga ticking is considerably higher. Right, so now we can play this Saga Lantern around a daze. All right, let's get rid of their Ponder here. The Bauble means if they play something like a Null Rod, we can just answer that anyway. Am I attacking with this Welder for one damage here? Is that worth doing? I don't think so. Like, we could end up in a situation where we want to remove their Null Rod. If that's a thing they have. Or a Grafdigger's Cage, because Grafdigger's Cage is creatures, so it doesn't count... Uh, land um artifacts so you can weld under i think you can weld under a cage right our opponent is casting a brainstorm they also didn't do anything in our end step which is uh, good news we've got their merc tide sort of answered here obviously using this the solar lantern like this is not exactly card advantage it's card disadvantage in fact because we're just Paying one mana and a card to effectively exile their whole graveyard is what the Solga Lantern would be. But if that stops them putting a giant Merc Titan in play, like if they put a little Merc Titan in, I think I can live with that. But I just don't want a massive one. There is the Merc Titan region. So we have a choice here. We can fire off a Solga Lantern now to draw a card, or we can just keep it in play for now and play this as a Saga game. Hmm, interesting. I think I would like to draw a card. So we forced our opponent to make a small Merc Tide to use the pressure of the Saga Lantern. Oh, Fable's really good here. Pick your poison. Uh, that's a pretty good one too. But if we play Pick Your Poison, we don't get to make an Urza Saga token. Which feels like a thing that I want to be doing. So I'm going to play this Scalding Tarn out. And I'm going to make an Urza Saga token. Um, are we playing around Stifle? I think so. Let's go and get Tiger here. We've got two Tigers, so we can always fetch the other one. If we need to pick your poison next turn. We can afford to take four from this Merc Tide. That's pretty acceptable to me. Maybe there's a way we should have dropped the, the creature. Because now, if we activate this, our opponent can kill our Welder. So we can't get our Soul back, Soul Guard Lantern back, if that's the thing we want to do. So they reduce our options, but they might not care about that being an option for us anyway. It's not necessarily what this game is about right now. We don't have a Shadow Spear, which is unfortunate, but... Right, so here's four of the finest damages coming into our face. Uh, it should also be noted that when we start Soul Guide Lanterning things from our opponent's graveyard, it will grow this Merc Tide. So we don't want to immediately put that into play. It's certainly not better than our Urza Saga construct here. Cast into the fire. Deals up to one damage, up to two target creatures. Uh, okay, we will exchange this with our Solar Lantern. We're going to be picking the poison anyway, and we might as well get a tiny bit of value here. Surgical extraction on our... I think, okay, that's fine. So what are we doing with our Saga? It's probably just the... Grindstone, have that one saved up for later. It does expose it a little bit, but they're unlikely to exile it unless they remove it and surge extract it. So we can always weld it back in later if that's a thing that is 
available to us. We now have to decide if we want to as a saga this turn. Because we can't pick your poison around a days. So I think we're probably tapping the Ezra Saga for mana. Then we can pick the poison and favor the Mirror Breaker. And our opponent's kind of got two options of things that they might want to counterspell. Goodbye, friends. Okay. A Phyrexian Dragon Engine. I think we are tapping this for one mana. We could get a Lotus Petal here. But what is that actually going to achieve if we do that? It makes our favor the Mirror Breaker played around days. Yeah, I like that. So, play this out. Let's, each opponent sacrifices a creature with flying, please. All right, so we've got Force of Will incoming here. And then we can play this. We do have to attack the Ancient Tomb. Not ideal, but it's fine. We've got the Mana's Pair on days. So we can Morlock and fight this Murktide Regent next turn because our... I guess what we really don't want to see is another Murktide Regent. Uh, which I wish I hadn't said because we've probably spoken it into existence. What are they exiled to these things? No Murktide Regents. Okay. Exiled another Force of Will. So if we can dodge Murktide Regent this turn, then I think we'll be okay. But every time I say that, it happens. So I should just keep my mouth shut. Okay, they don't have a Murktide Regent because you play it pre-combat for additional damages. So that's something. If they play a fetch land, we have to be aware of the potential of a Mystic Sanctuary. In terms of how we grow our creature, how, how they can grow their creature, and how we grow ours with the Morlock. Dragon's Rage Channeler. How big is that? A 1 1. That's fine. A break count. Okay, we can discard some cards here. So I think we want to get rid of the Dragon Engine and probably one of these lands. Uh, it doesn't matter which one. A Chaos Defiler, you say? That's a pretty good one. Let's attack with our Goblin Shaman first. Get just some more mana to work with here. Our opponent has one card in hand, so they could have a daze here. So how much mana do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we want to Morlock for five, we are playing into daze here. One, two, three. Um, one, two. We could just Chaos Defiler. That's probably a fine way to do this. Like both of these plays... Don't have a great time versus days. Uh, sorry, not days. Stifle. So black, red, two, and this. So this is when it enters the battlefield or dies. We could have paid with these to play around a lightning bolt from our opponent. Let's get rid of this Merc Tide. And I don't think I need to play anything else out here. Uh, what happens if I play... If I play Breakout, it plays into Days. Am I okay with that? If we find a Welder, we can just weld this out and get rid of this immediately. I think that's acceptable. Red. Green. There's the Welder. Alright, let's swap this for a Lotus Petal, I think. We've assembled the engine. Alright, our opponent's had enough. And we win that match 2-0. Yeah, felt pretty good there. Having main deck Pyroblasts is uh, pretty good against blue decks, it turns out. All right, let's go to round three. We're on the play for round three. Uh, Mana Dork into turn two, Fail the Mirror Breaker. Sign me up. That sounds pretty good. All right, Tiger. Green source. For the Noble Ignoble Hierarch, sorry. And then we pass it on over. A marsh flats from our opponent. This gives me reanimator sort of vibes. But it could be like a, a black-white mid-rangey style deck. There's a few of those around at the moment that people are sort of playing. Alright, a basic swamp. A dark rich. Alright, feels like we're just going to get entombed on. And reanimated. A thought seize. Um, I think we have to let this hit. They could still have... In tune, we animate and just kill us right now. But if they don't, we get to play the game for a little bit longer. Like they could just be playing like a more of a stompy deck rather than a reanimate you and just make this a non game sort of deck. But we'll see. Breakout is an interesting one for them here because it could represent something like a Dante Voidwalker if that's you know what their deck's planning on doing. We will see. They took the fable, not a surprise. 
Sounds like Stalker. Okay, we're not getting reanimated on. Unless they like a Street Wraith and reanimate that, which isn't the end of the world. It's not the scariest thing in the world. Uh, interesting. So, this will grow because of the Marsh Flats. But we can Morlock and just kill it next turn. Because we'll have a 3-3. Three, three. So I don't hate that exchange of our opponents playing like Mono Black Scam with Dark Rituals. Alright, a Grief pitching Static Attack Stalker. So we're about to lose the Morlock is what, it's, what I'm reading here. Are they going to reanimate this Grief as well? And just play their entire hand on turn 1? In a fair-ish deck? Alright, so there goes the Morlocks, surely. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see reanimate. Just really uh, jam us up. No. Alright, so this Static Attack Stalker is going to grow. And we have some decisions to make. Um, we could break out here. That's certainly an option. I think that's probably better than our other options. Okay, so green and red. Let's break out. A Goblin Welder. Not at your strongest right now, are you, Mr. Welder? I can live with that. Okay. So we can attack with the 2-2 two -two and see if they want to trade the Stalactite Stalker for the Welder. I'm okay with that considering our opponents expend a lot of resources and we have a spare welder. Feel the wrath of my mighty goblin. I do not believe they're going to block here. So would I rather have card selection off of our thing or another welder? I think I would rather have the card selection. So I'm going to crack this on our opponent's turn and get ourselves the commercial district. A wasteland. Okay. We've got a mana dork so wastelands don't feel amazing here. It's going to be an orcish bowmasters. All right. What are they going to take here? They could take the Hierarch and then next turn Wasteland us. Yeah, that looks like what our opponent's opting to do here. Can't say I disagree with that line. That seems like a very good line that I would also take. All right, so we get attacked for two this turn and it will grow to three next turn. This also means that we can't even contest their Stalker with a Morlock. All right, Bloodstone Maya, let's crack you. Get our little district. Love these Surveil Lands. What have you found us? A goblin engineer. Um, we could... If we put that on top, then we get to do some pretty gross stuff in the near future. I think we'll put this on top of our library. We do need to find a land if we're going to try and make this play. But we'll worry about that next turn. Right, here is the goblin engineer. We do not have an artifact at present. Also, if we put a Chaos Defiler into our graveyard... There is a very real chance our opponent can reanimate it. Now, our opponent is hellbent. They don't have any selection because they're a mono black deck by the looks of things. Marsh Flats kind of indicates that as well as the basic swamp. So, what is the play here? I don't really want to draw any extra cards either. So, I don't really want the Dragon Engine. I think it is just the Chaos Defiler and hope that we draw either a Mana Source next turn or a artifact that we can play, like a one mana artifact. If that happens, then I think we are doing okay. They know we have a Painted Servant in hand from an earlier peek at our hand with the Grief. So they should know to Wasteland us here to stop us having that easy artifact. Now, if our opponent's drawn a Reanimate, then that sucks for us. They will also be cracking this Wasteland because it will power up their Stalactite Stalk. I don't really want to double block here. Kind of need this Welder. There that goes. Go in the friend. Okay. Land or artifact? Hmm. You are neither of those things. Would I like to keep a Veil of Summer up? Or would I like to keep... Or would I like to have another Goblin Welder? I think the Veil of Summer, if our opponent plays anything, uh, gives us a chance at drawing into a land that we need. Now, our life turtle is not an infinite resource. But as soon as we can get this Painted Servant in play, and thus this Chaos Defiler in play, then we're going to have good times. I'm not looking forward to reanimation spell on our Chaos Defiler. But this is uh, the ticket we've bought. We are on the ride. Let's hope it doesn't go horribly wrong for us. Well, well, well. Do you know that thing I said that I didn't want to happen? You'll never guess. Um, yikes. So this doesn't target either. So our Veil of Summer won't do anything. We do get to draw a card. We're going to lose our Welder here. 
Not that it matters because this defile is probably just gonna wreck us anyway. Hmm. Goodbye, friend. Well, well, well. What a disaster that turned out to be. I did say that was the risk. We missed on the land for that one turn, so. And we have less artifacts in our deck than I would necessarily like. Okay, so I think we need to draw a card here. This will grow their, their Bowmasters, but we're going to cycle because we got the reanimate. Yeah, so this can't ping our guys, so we'll have to just ping one of their things. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the file has got a big enough booty to take that. Okay, deck. You need to be kind to us. That's not very kind. I don't think we're winning this one. I think it's too far gone. Yeah, we uh, we took our chances. And it went horribly for us. Okay, so I like Fairy Macabre here. I don't mind the Canoptic Scarab Swarm. Uh, Pyrokinesis could be useful. But I don't think that's where I want to fight this one. Uh, do I believe our opponent's got something like a Null Rod? That's a possibility. So maybe we have to have some number of pick your poison. They don't really have flying threats though. We have so little... Because we've already lost the first game, we don't really have the wiggle room. I guess we have Chaos Defiler, that's our kind of attempt to answer something spooky. Alright, so what do we want for these four things? I think the Morlock looks good here. They're probably just trimming on some blasts and a grindstone. You just chew the grindstone up when the time is relevant. Do you even want this? We could trim one painted servant and get something like a pick your poison just as an emergency relief if we need it. Uh, they could have something like a ley line as well. All right, I've convinced myself into playing one pick your poison. Okay, Badlands, very aptly named for this hand. Um, I don't think we should be keeping this one. I think it's quite slow. And doesn't really go anywhere. It's very susceptible to Wasteland. Like, we can't cast these two spells. Well, these three spells. So I think we're going to mulligan this one. Uh, this one looks a lot better. We've got some Graveyard Hate. Do we need to keep all of this Graveyard Hate? Can we just play out our Solgar Lantern on turn one? Uh, do you want the Breakout? Do you want the Morlock? Hmm. I think we want to keep the Hierarch. I think I'm getting rid of the Breakout. We just keep the Guaranteed Removal spell and the Morlock. I will lead out on this because I don't want to get our green source wasted before we play our Hierarch. So we'll play out this Solgar Lantern and carry on. So this means that we can't get reanimated in some horrible way on turn one at least. It means we can't Morlock on turn 2, because we didn't play our Hierarch, but we protected our Hierarch. Well, sorry, we protected our Tiger from a Wasteland. Standard type Stalker with no... Thing. They might be just griefing now, though. Or uh, cycling a Street Wraith, that sort of jam. They might still grow this. No, just a 1-mana one 1-1. One one. Alright. I can live with 1-mana one 1-1s. One oh, wow. Um... I think I'm just going to be playing the Urza Saga game. That Ancient Tomb was a pretty good draw. Truth be told. There is a Wasteland. We're just going to lose our Saga here. Sure, I would like to make a 2-2 creature, please. Goodbye, Urza Saga. So there, Static -like Stalker will grow. A Dark Ritual, not a fan of that one. What are you going to do to me, opponent? A Null Rod. Um... Yeah, that's one of the things we said that our opponent could have. We have two answers to this in our deck, as well as just going around it by playing good cards. Fatal push, yep. Okay. Our opponent has done some things. Now, we could have sacrificed this in response, but this makes our as a Saga constructs better if we have them in the future. Gives us stuff to welder around with. Um, okay, I would like to cast an Ignoble Hierarch. So we can make a big Morlock next turn and just kill their Stalactite Stalker. We just need to dodge whatever is in our opponent's hand this turn, really. Although it feels like every time I say that lately, uh, <laughs> our opponent's got something scary in their hand. So tempting a bit of the old fate there. All right, Stalker. Bam. That's going to take us down to 15. 
They could play a Blow Masters and hit a Hierarch. That'd be pretty good here. A Fatal Push. Okay, that's reasonable. Two cards left in our opponent's hand. Okay. We do get some Warlock here. We only have one Black Source that we can fetch. So are we supposed to just get another Tiger and lock in our green sources? I think that's probably the best thing to do because then we can use this as our Black Source. And we need another land anyway. Okay, so red, green, and two. Let's make a 4-4. Four, four. Let's gobble up there, little friend. We got the biggest game in town. This will be attacking for five next turn due to Ignoble Hierarch. We still get this Fairy Macabre, so we're not so worried about some things that can happen. We can also draw into a whole bunch of good stuff. Things like Breakout is pretty nice. I probably thought about casting spell and decided against it. I think they might have another fatal push. Uh, let's play this Hierarch first. Love seeing this. All right, let's get our 5-5 in there. Do you have the answer? They do not. Interesting. All right, let's make a Fable. Now, we've, we've lost quite a lot of life so far, but our opponent doesn't have a threat in play. We do have their graveyard covered without them knowing we have it covered. A Dark Ritual End Step. Okay. An Opposition Agent. Obviously pretty good against some of the things that we can do with our deck. For example, Urza's Saga and the Goblin Engineer. If they offer the trade with our Shaman, I think I'm happy to take that. What have you got, opponent? Reanimate on our Hierarch. Uh, I guess we take out our Hierarch. Is that worth doing? They'll be attacking with a bigger guy. I don't really want that to happen. If they attack for four here, that puts us to six. Then we attack for five. Mm. How do I feel about this exchange? Our opponent doesn't have much going on. All right, we'll, we will get rid of this hierarchy and just say no straight away. Now they need to put a creature into the graveyard and get a reanimation spell so that's at least two cards worth of stuff and if they want to do it all in one turn that's three cards from where they are now wait what did i not click that whoops okay uh that's an embarrassing one all right we'll take that four i'm sure i clicked it because i hovered it and it showed it all right my bad all right we will discard this card that we do not want another frame of card very funny deck okay so we can attack with our Shaman and then trade our Morlock for their creature. But if we start copying our Morlock, we can do loads of cool stuff. So that's going to be my plan. Are you going to chump block this one or are you just going to take it? I think they're liable to uh, take it here. Why did my frame of carb not target the thing that I thought I clicked? What an error. Okay, so are we discard? Are we what are we getting rid of here is the question, or are we just going to take four? That does put us dead to double bowmasters or any of their menace threats. I don't think this game is about having access to black mana right now. I think we're just going to say chump block. We can chump block one more turn if we need to, and then we can start more locking all of their things down. So that'd be pretty good. Oh, breakout! I'd like to see that. This does not search, it looks at the top six, so it won't get affected by the opposition agent. And next turn we can start firing this up. Red, green, let's make the thing. Uh, Chaos Defiler is unfortunately not where we want to be. Uh, we can get the Goblin Engineer. This is a May, so we don't have to search. Would I like to have the Chaos Defiler in my hand? I think so. And... If we attack here, is our opponent... We're not blocking here. Right, so we can get four in. We don't have a hierarchy anymore. We got Bowmaster at the end step? They don't. Okay, that's good. So we can chump block this turn, then we can just start more locking everything. I think we will need to block. We want to keep our Ancient Tomb online, if possible. Now, they could have just a removal spell, and they target our Morlock when we go for it, and that would be very sad for us. Because we do technically just have... If they have nothing, we can just copy the Morlock, fight their Hierarch, swing for six, win the game. But would they make that attack if they had that? 
We could play this Chaos Defiler, though. That feels like quite a safe thing to do. Let's go and get this Badlands. It's going to put us to three, which isn't the largest life total I've ever seen. But as soon as we start copying Chaos Defiler, this game is very over. Oh, wait, what am I doing? We can't search because the opposition agent. One error. We just pay ourselves some damage for no reason. Disgusting. Okay. That is not the one, is it? That was such an error. And our opponents exiled our Badlands almost certainly there. Yeah. What an absolute punt that was. Yikes. And Orcish Bowmasters. Oh, they could still have a fatal push here. What are they going to target? They're going to target our face. Sure. We gave them a three point damage, so. Um, I think I'd rather get our Morlock doing its job on blocks here. Right, no attacks. That's pretty good news for us. Let's see if we can copy this. You got a removal spell? They do not. Okay, so we can just fight down this guy. Certainly made things more difficult for ourselves. Oh, there's a thing that we didn't get to do anything with. Um, so we can copy this and smash something else out. Turn our opponent's turn to give us more blockers, considering our low life total. If they've got like another Bowmasters, that's something I wouldn't mind being able to play around a little bit. I'm going to do this now before they draw a card, because we know they didn't have a removal spell last turn. Because you just hit the Morlock in response. So this is going to fight the... We'll fight the Hierarch here. Is that the right one? I don't really like the Exalted. We've certainly made this game more difficult for ourselves than we had to. We could have just fought away the, the Opposition Agent and then just done our thing. Alright. He's got two cards in hand. An Arid Mesa. We can get our Surveil Land if we want to. I think it's worth playing this out. And I guess we don't need to attack now. We can just make a Morlock in our opponent's end step and then we have lethal. What's our opponent up to over there? Two mana. It's going to be like Animate Dead. A Doughty Void Walker. Okay, we can fight that. Or we can try and win the game. Certainly an interesting idea. Fight. So we will fight this orc army. A goblin engineer. What does that do? It puts something underneath their Dante Void Walker. Not a big fan of that. So if we copy this Morlock. Probably should have copied the copy actually. This fights this. Alright. Our opponents scooped up. Even though we punted a little bit. We managed to get through in the end. So we have seen the Null Rods now, which makes these Pick Your Poisons a little bit better. But as you saw, we don't actually need... We've kind of bored in a way where we don't actually need to activate the abilities of our artifacts to win. And I think having one Pick Your Poison, one Chaos Defiler is probably acceptable here. We also have the Welder, which can weld out using a Bauble for their Null Rod. So, yeah, I think this is pretty reasonable, and we'll just go back in again. If they had more things that we could hit with our pick your poison, I'd be more tempted to keep it in. What does this hand do? It's pretty slow. Like, what are we doing? We can engineer and start doing some stuff that way. I think, I think I'd rather have something with some... I was going to say with some one drops. It's got one drops. This hand is not without risk, though. I think we'll keep this. And I think we're not about the Painted Servant right now. Maybe we're supposed to throw back one of those veils. I didn't do anything there. Love to see a land. Okay. Right, I'll play this out and hold up the veil. A dark ritual. We're going to see an opposition agent, perhaps. A wasteland. Okay. Not a fan of that one. Okay. That's gone somewhat poorly for us. Like They've not got a big clock. So we've got time. Maybe I was more scared of reanimate stuff than I needed to be for my opponent's deck. So this is not a thing that does anything. So let's just play this district. We're looking for hard mana sources. Pick a poison isn't really what we're looking for. So this can go into the graveyard, I think. We just want mana sources we can actually use. Which could just be one of those games we get cheesed out by the opera agent. They certainly happen. 
Like we could have had a, an en a welder in play instead of holding up that veil. Right, another wasteland. Okay, yep, the old wasteland oppo cheese is probably going to be good enough. We can go down to 14 here. Oh, they've got another creature as well. Okay, so they've got like a three turn clock here. So I don't believe we're going to have enough time to get through this. Like, if we just draw a runner and a land, then maybe we can start getting somewhere. But they can't be fetch lands. All right, so we'll play out the scolding tarn. We can't crack this. I think our opponent's got us. Maybe we did want pyrokinesis. I should have thought about that a bit more. Like, it would look a lot better than these Veil of Summers right now, that's for sure. I doubt the Voidwalker, sure. So if they've got Bowmasters, they will kill us on the next turn. Um, okay. We can play a Welder. That's not going to help us out here, though. It can, present, it can prevent three damage. I think we need to aim higher than that. Although I don't know if we have any realistic way of winning this game now. Alright. So they're going to have a bunch of... They're going to have two unblockable guys next turn as well. We could have played the Welder here and saved one point of damage. But then, where does that gas? Dark Ritual. Bowmasters. Like, we're not technically dead. But what, what does this get us? Yeah, we got nothing there. We just got... Uh, different sort of scam there. We got the opposition plus the, the wasteland hit there. But I found a little bit of trouble with the mana so far in this deck. Uh, like, Ignoble Hierarchs aren't quite the same as, like, having more Lotus Petals and Sin Spirit Guys. They let us play ahead of curve a bit more. Um, like, uh, like, super early on instead of having to set our thing down and make sure it lives long enough. All right, that's a one and two so far. Let's go to round four. Once again, we're having a little bit of mana issues here. I don't think we can keep Lotus Petal into Ignoble Hierarch. We just need a couple of lands underneath us. All right, this is much more like it. We keep this. Um, I think we want the artifact land here. We don't actually have a green source. So maybe it's the Hierarch that goes. And then we can just lead off on this little friend here. We can just, re not race to Painter, but we can get to Painter on turn four. So we can engineer for a Painter, play the Ezra Saga, and just kind of carry on from there. Our opponent's Green Sun's anything for zero to get themselves a Dryad Arbor. So we could be looking at Maverick, Green White Depths, that sort of ballpark. Right, let's play this out. Just get our engineer going. So we could put a Friction Dragon engine in here. That is an option we have available to us. But with these double sagas, I think we're better off just getting the painter and then we can just do a combination of saga beatdown into painter combo and kind of get our opponent two ways that way. And just play these lands out of our hand and kind of move on with life. All right, windswept heath being cracked here. So I'll probably have a big haymaker three drop like a knight or something. Yeah, that's a big haymaker three drop. Yikes. What is our plan here? Uh, so we play out the Ancient Tomb. That gives us an Urza Saga Construct. We can get the Painter. Our opponent can get a Paducah Bog here. But they kind of have to keep their Knight up the whole time. Unless they have a removal spell. Because we're not getting attacked by the Knight and we can just let these Urza Sagas tick up and make us guys. And eventually they'll be big enough. Like they attack with the Knight, we make a Construct, block, turn it into a Welder. Sorry, into a painter using the engineer. Some planes I've not seen before. So that's that from Markov Man, I think. All right. What are we looking at here? Green and white. No. Probably decided against it. Right, searching for a land. Let's see what they find. It's a wasteland. Sure. And they're wastelanding. Sure. I'll have an Ezra Saga. Let's make our little friend. Ooh. Well, we can't respond to that. It's got split second. So what are they going to get now? Oh, they're doing this so they can fight with the engineer. Sure. Pretty cool. Another wasteland. Goodbye, ancient tomb. Yeah, another reliquary is a pretty good card. Like, it's an easy enough card to kill a lot of the time. But if you can't kill it, it will just win the game on its own. Quite the powerhouse. Uh-oh. Our opponent has 18 power in play. If you take a quick peek at our life total, it's 18. We do have a chump blocker for a turn. 
Um, I guess we're playing Urza Saga into Goblin Welder. I do not believe that our Urza Saga is going to live particularly long. But our opponent might just crunch twice and just assume that we can't beat that. Which is not an unfair assumption to make, given our current situation. We definitely have a way of winning if our opponent... Yikes. This feels bad. Yep. Like, green-white depths type strategies are in such a good place right now in the meta. Right. I think we have to take nine, do we? Well, we're going to. Next time they can just the Joey step and kill us anyway. I don't really know what our solution here is. But if our opponent wants to show us more cards, we can have a look at some more of their lovely cards. There's a Wasteland. Yeah, I don't want to play this game anymore. All right. What do we get out of the sideboard? I think we need Pyrokinesis here. Uh, Pither Needle is going to be useful. Haywire Might is something we can do things with. Uh, Coloptex Scarab Swarm is fine. So we've got these things which are okay. Morlock fights some stuff. I don't mind that. These Veil of Summers are bad. And I don't really want these Pyroblasts. Yes, we can do the whole Painter and then Blast their thing. But that's not the most reliable thing in the world, if I'm being honest with you. So I'm going to submit like this. I'm just trying to think if we want any Pick Your Poison type stuff. Our brain doesn't really have flyers outside of Merit Lage, which is usually going to be made at instant speed. They can have things like Sylvan Library and Mox Diamond. I don't think that's where I want to be. Maybe someone who is better at Painter will tell you otherwise. All right, let's play first. Um, turn one Hierarch, turn two some other stuff. Or turn one Grindstone with Saga Ticking. Like this is a keep, I just have to work out how to play it. I think I want the mana advantage of getting this um, hierarchy into play. Although if we play the if we play the welder first, it gives us the opportunity to draw into an artifact land. Although we have so few artifacts in our deck that we can actually just straight up play. Hmm. This is a tough call, I think. I think I just want the mana underneath us here. Like if we spike a a one of Great Furnace or a Lotus Petal. So that's three cards on our deck, then the other player's better. But I think this player's better with most of the draws that we have in our deck. We can just spam out a couple of things next turn. Once upon a time from our opponent, free spells are good. They found a Windswept Heath. Right, they are cracking their Windswept Heath. This is the Bayou into a Noble Hierarch. Which Hierarch is going to go all the way? Let's find out. Uh, an Ancient Tomb, does that change anything? I don't believe it does. I think we are on the Urza Saga train here. So we'll have red mana for a Goblin Welder. And then we'll have this mana for an Engineer. Then we have to work out what we think is going to be the best thing to find. So we can go for the Painter and just try and go for that kill. We could go for the Chaos Defiler and hope that our Goblin Welder lives a turn. If our Goblin Welder doesn't live a turn, though, that's going to suck. Whereas if we get the Pain of Servant, we can at least get that going. So it's basically a case of are we planning for being able to Goldfish or are we planning on our opponent having some interaction with us? So something like a Reflection Dragon Engine could do some work for us here. I think I want the Painter's Servant, though. I want to just try and have that. We're not trying to Goldfish here. I think if we're trying to just Goldfish and do the most powerful thing, we get the Chaos Defiler there. So we can just try and weld that in next turn. We might be able to catch our opponent by surprise using our Grindstone from hand rather than this as a Saga to fetch it. So we might go a turn quicker than our opponent thinks. So we might tap out this turn and then try and get us next turn. Scavenging Ooze. All right. It didn't matter what we got as it turned out. So... Sure. And I want to eat this now before we have our welders available. The delicious taste of Painter Servant. Okay. I see how it is. A Pyrokinesis with no red card. Alright. Now what? One mana, two mana, three mana, four, five mana. So we can't play Pyrokinesis this turn. We might be able to play it next turn. Um, interesting. 
if we play out this ancient tomb, we can also play out this grindstone and have access to another artifact to make our saga bigger. All right. Next turn we can pyrokinesis if that's the thing we have to do. But again, we'll see what's going on. We can start grindstoning ourselves if we get rid of this scavenging ooze. What fresh horrors is this going to be? A fiend artisan. That's currently a 1-1. One, one. So if we pyrokinesis here, that's going to be pretty good. All right, they're attacking for 3 or 4 even. That's fine. I will take that. Savannah. Okay. Feels like Orcish Bowmasters in our future. Oh, wait, no, it can't be Orcish Bowmasters, right? Uh, okay, that's pretty good too. We didn't make our construct to end step. That was an error. Um, okay. So what do we want here? I think we want a Lotus Petal. Just so we have a little bit more mana. And we'll play this one out. So this is going to be black, red, one, two, three. Cast this. Oh, wait, we've still got one floating, haven't we? All right. Here is a little friend. I think we take out the Fiend Artisan first. We can trade this in combat, and that's not going to be amazing for our opponent. A plow, you say? Um, interesting. So if we tap this for red... Our opponent can have a second plow here. If we tap this for red, then we weld this out this this will eat their scavenging ooze and we get our lotus petal back this resolves and then all right our opponent's scooping up because we've got this defiler loop not the tidiest game of magic the gathering ever played but it worked out all right for us i uh, don't think we want to do anything differently here and we're just going to go in we we didn't show them the pyrokinesis which is important but we did have some trouble we couldn't pitch cast it. We'd have to actually be hard casting it. What does our hand do? We have a fighting man. We have a pyrokinesis. Uh, the haywire might is not the most impressive thing we can have here. Uh, it can answer some libraries and stuff like that. But it's also an artifact. It feels like we do need artifact. I think I will keep this one and try and lean on the commercial district doing us some work. Try and find us our next play. There is a Savannah into some kind of Mana Dork, I would imagine. This is like a Green Sun Zenith for... Yep, yeah, there it is. You can always tell how, what they're casting by how long it takes them to put the mana in the pool and resolve it. X-Spells, you can usually see coming. An Ignoble Hierarch is interesting. I think I want this so that we're more likely to get our uh, Morlock being big for the next turn. We're kind of just this weird Gruul mid-range deck, to be honest. With with this Painter kill somewhere in it, but we're not really killing our opponent with Painter. All right, there is a Wasteland. They can take out our land if they want to. They can also plow our creature, potentially. A Collector Oof. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a thing. We can't really do much about that right now. But we have answers to that for later on. So I think we are incentivized. I don't want to fight this Collector Oof just now. I think we're just going to play this Commercial District. Have a little bit of value. Do I want an Urza Saga? Yes, yes I do. I think that's a very good card. And then we'll play a 1 mana 1-1 one, one with no abilities. Well, when it dies we gain 2 life still, but it doesn't have any activated abilities. Next turn we can play a Morlock where X is 1, so it'll be a 3-3 three, three and fight with our opponent's collector. Or they can just keep wastelanding us. But we've got lots of lands in hand, so... A Fiend Artisan. Okay, does that change anything here? We can kill our opponent's entire board. Uh, this feels pretty good. And then we can just play this as a saga off the top. And that's some good action. Start bashing for two here. Not a bad exchange. We got rid of our opponent's best card in the matchup. And then also another good card. And we sort of nailed the mana down a turn. All right. Ooh, nothing else for our opponent there. And we just play this mountain and bash for two. This time we'll remember to make our as a saga construct. We did forget once last game. All right, our opponent's had enough. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
again, we are a red-green mid-range deck that has a painter in it that we never really do anything with, for the most part. Uh, okay, that puts us to two and two, so we're now fighting for the positive record. Let's see if we can get it. All right, um, we're on a bit of a sketchy mana again, which keeps happening, but we're on the play and we can just play a mana dork, so I think that's worth doing. Play it and kind of hope it gets there. By having like a green one drop, we are sometimes pushing ourselves into a territory where we have to open ourselves up to wasteland a little bit more than I would necessarily like. But we have so many good wasteland targets in our deck because we're playing as a sagas that, you know, if we soak some wastelands on things like Tiger, maybe we get to do our more exciting things with as a saga down the line. Uh, basic planes. Oh, wow. Yoshimaru, the ever faithful. Would love to find a land here. We did not find a land. Okay, we'll just cast this green, red. Right, a 2-2 two, two beats a 1-1. One, one. Delicious. All right, we're playing a red-green mid-range deck again. There is planes. We can see a Thalia or something here. Skrelv Defector Might. And a Legion's Landing. All right, Legendary Enchantment enters the battlefield. Create a 1-1 one, one Vampire with lifelink. When you attack with three or more creatures, transform it. It becomes a land with pay three, make a Vampire. And Skrelv is like the bad mother of runes. Interesting. Obviously, it's legendary. That's why they're playing it. They're uh, leaning into their theme a fair bit there. A Bloodstained Mire. What is our plan for this one? Hmm. So, we can just play a Fable, and that's probably a pretty good thing to do. What lands we want here. Our opponent could be running Wasteland, so I'm more incentivized to get a Tiger here. So, I think we're going to get this Tiger and jam a Fable. I think we attack with our... 3-3 three, three here. Okay, so we're going to be cooking with the old welders very soon. Plaza of Heroes. This is the one that makes legendary mana. Target legendary creature against Hexproof and destruct from turn to turn. Add one mana among the color of legendary permanents you control. Add one mana only casting a legendary. Okay, Honor of the Pure. Alright, our opponent's like a good old fashioned sort of legendary token style type thing. Okay, so this can... Give it Hexproof, but not Protection. So we can trade our Goblin Shaman token for their Vampire token if they attack here. Or we can trade it for the Skrell. Do I care about taking this damage? Or do I really want... I think I really want this Goblin Shaman to tick up. Uh, and can't be blocked. So they can make their creature unblockable with the Skrell. Just something to consider. Right. We're going to be pitching some cards to Fable of the Mirror Breaker. What are we going to get rid of here? Think I don't want this ignoble hierarch right now. I don't think we're about that, and I don't think we want the painted servant just yet. Or is it the other fable? I think I'd rather just have more fables right now. Chaos Defier. That's kind of one of the things that we were trying to find. Okay. Green, red, and black. Let's make this friend. I think we're just going to take the scroll out, so they can't have any unblockable stuff going on. I think we'll attack with this and get our welder into play so we can just start doing some pretty gross things. Do you want to trade your 3-3 three, three for my 3-3? Three, three? Also, we got the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which can start copying the Defiler as well. So we are very much mid-ranging away here. All right, here comes the welder. All right, so White Removal can just get rid of our Defiler for good. But if that happens, then we can still start copying our Morlock, and that's going to be reasonable on this board. All right, our opponent's had enough. The mid-range was strong. I would like some Pyrokinesis, please. And I think Pick Your Poison is going to be relevant here. Our opponent's shown us an enchantment we want to kill. They've also shown us some artifacts that are kind of good. I think... Shown us? They haven't shown us. Yeah, they've shown us Skrell. That's an artifact, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So, Haywire Might seems pretty useful here. This doesn't look like a Solgar Lantern matchup. And then we have to make some decisions. We want all of our removals, so these are staying in. I can mean, probably just trim on this. We don't really want... Actually, we don't really want the blasts, and we don't really want the, the veils. Uh, this gets us a Scarab Swarm, which can give us loads of blockers. I think something like this looks fine. We could try and keep some blasts to go with our painters, but they just feel so bad when you don't have the painter. They are red cards to pitch, though. But I don't think we should be playing cards just for the explicit purpose of 
discarding them most of the time. Right, I think we are just a bit bigger than what our opponent's putting down. So as long as we can survive the early rush, we should be okay. And as long as we don't get like picked apart by a Skrell, giving them unblockable. But it chooses a color. I don't, can't remember if it chooses artifact or not. Uh, all right, this is not a hand we get to keep unless we think we can just win the game with a Saga. Although we do have the Pyrokinesis. We didn't see a Wasteland from our opponent. Sure, I'm going to keep this one. I think Pyrokinesis is just so good that I'm willing to keep this one and just um, play a Saga game and then hopefully something will shake loose afterwards. Maybe we can get ourselves... Or our opponent's mulligan to five, so our Pyrokinesis is likely to do some work. If our opponent's also like a Null Rod, we can also stamp on that down the line with a Pick of Poison. Yoshimaru. So you can wait till the trigger is on the stack and try and kill multiple things here. Let's just play a Saga. This can get us a green source for Pick Your Poison if that's the thing we need. So let's see what our opponent does here. This little dog can get out of hand. There's a Plains. Sanctifier and Vet. Protection from black and red. Um, those are the colours that we're trying to play with. I see. To say, uh, if a black or red permanent spell or card not on the battlefield were put into graveyard, exile. Okay. Right, we're going to take one this turn. That's not the end of the world. Right, we found our land for later. Then we're just going to make a colourless creature that can gobble up this Sanctifier and Vec. And then hope that our Pyrokinesis can clean up whatever else our opponent's got that they're putting down. And offensive. Whenever non-token creatures enter the battlefield under your control, bolster one. Okay, so now I would like to cast this. So I'll put two and two. I'm not sure I know exactly what this card does. Bolster when a creature with least toughness of one creature you can try. Alright, so we will shoot these down. And we have to decide which of our things goes here. Is it our thing that lets us tutor? Or is it the thing that lets us do some more broken things in terms of the timing and stuff? Interesting. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of the engineer. I believe in the power of Fable the Mirror Breaker. And we can cast that whilst making a Saga token. This might be our opponent scooping soon as well, because they multi five as well. So it's a bit harsh on them. Right, so they can attack us for two. I don't want to make a 1 1 to block. Our opponent's only got one card in hand. Right, let's make a friend. Alright. Make another friend. All right, our opponent just had enough. Um, fair enough. So a bit of a a non-go there because our opponent just mulliganed quite bad and we just got a nice little blowout with our pyrokinesis on their deck that needs kind of critical mass early on. So we finished with a 3-2, which is, you know, positive record, pretty reasonable. But I've got some thoughts on this deck, so let's just get right into what those thoughts are. So our deck is trying to play a green one drop instead of playing something like a Simian Spirit Guy, which we can use to power out some of our more powerful things. So we don't play Favor the Mirror Breaker on turn one like you would sometimes do. Like We can do that with the Dose Petals, but in like Red Painter, you can just go like Tomb and then one of your like six Petal or Spirit Guide effects and just dump a Fable. And that's such a powerful turn one play. They just set your game up really nicely. We don't get to do that because we're playing these Hierarchs. Obviously, these Hierarchs make our breakouts better. They also help us cast... Things like Defiler and Morlock, which are kind of important because we are trying to diversify the color of mana compared to regular painter decks. But that does come at a cost, and I did feel that a fair few times. The mana base here did feel a little bit sketchy at times. Uh, we had to keep some dubious ones, and we definitely lost games due to getting wastelanded. And there was that game against the Mono Black deck where we just kind of, you know, we got wastelanded twice, and that was it. We didn't get to play the game anymore. So that's a little bit awkward. Uh, what I will say that also felt a bit problematic for us is we're running a load of welders a load of engineers and stuff but we don't have very many artifacts we've got one artifact land whereas you normally see two or three in painter we've only got two petals we've got no moxes so we're kind of struggling for cards to actually start doing our welding like we had that game where if we drew any artifact or a land to be fair we could have pretty much won the game and got the defiler back against the black mono black deck but we just missed on those cards because we have so few artifacts in our deck and it doesn't feel like we're a painter deck as much as we're just a sort of red green mid-range deck it feels like we want to be doing more like you know chaos defiler morlock fighting creatures type thing 
<clears throat> you know, which is fine, but it feels like the elements of our deck are fighting against each other just a little bit. Because Ancient Tomb and Urza Saga aren't the best friends with Morlock. You know, we need to get red and green to get this on the go. Same with Breakout. And if we've got those things going, then we're sometimes struggling to get our artifacts. Because if we don't have the Saga, we're a bit short on artifacts to start doing our welding things with anyway. So it feels like when the pieces come together, it's pretty good. But we're not always locking those pieces together quite as much as you would hope. Uh, the Veil of Summer didn't really do that much for us. Now, we didn't play against um, Rescaminator. We did play against Mono Black Scan. And it wasn't great there. And I kind of wish I had the Pyrokinesis instead. But I think that's on me rather than the deck, to be honest. Uh, obviously, Chaos Defiler is pretty great. And I, will... I kind of wish we had more artifacts so we could do that more reliably. Because it feels like the best thing we're doing our deck most of the time is just let's defile a bunch. I think Morlock is pretty good here but the mana considerations are definitely not free so i think there is a little bit more tension than i would like in this sort of list but i think there's definitely some promise here and if we start adding in some more artifacts to make things sort of tick along a bit better that could be pretty good because we're running the commercial district i don't think we have the space to run the indestructible red green land um, it's an red-green artifact, so that would obviously help with our artifact count and it would be indestructible, which would be nice. But I think because we're running this fetch down mana base, it makes more sense to have the Surveyor one. But it just becomes harder to try and think where are we going to fit more artifacts into our deck. Honestly, we could even like think about trimming some number of Painter and stuff because it doesn't feel like we're doing that as much as we should. But, you know, when you add in all these extra cards, you know, that space has got to come from somewhere. Do we really want to be a four Morlock deck? That's definitely something to think about. But if you're just playing a, a red-green mid-range game, that's going to be good against some of the field. Like, as you saw against the matchups we won, just playing mid rangey guys is pretty good. And if you ever start doing Defiler Locks, it's, it's pretty nice too. I think almost you could play this deck where Painter Servant is even more of a secondary thing we're doing. So you could even... As wild as it sounds, you could trim like... Let's move these things out. Um, so you could possibly even trim something like this package here. And, you know, so we've still got a painter. We've still got a grindstone. So we can tutor those up using our engineers or maybe find them with the breakouts or whatever. But then we can have a little bit more stuff to go with our like mid rangey plan and do more weldery things. Like we're probably going to want to have a few more creatures to make our breakouts better. Um, and quite what those creatures should be, I'm not entirely sure. But that's certainly a thought. Like, it felt like we weren't the most painterly painter deck you've ever seen in the way the game's played out. I think, you know, when you're running four Morlocks, um, you're going to be drawing a bunch of hands where you're like, okay, let's just make this big guy and hope that he gets there. But once again, I think we showed how bonkers the Defier is. Like, there was that one game where... We put it in, then our opponent tried to kill it, and then we could just take it out and put it in again in that same turn and just completely annihilate all of our opponent's things. And that feels really strong. And there's definitely... I think there's definitely room for some sort of mid-rangey defiler sort of list like this. And if you're running mana dorks, it does make it easier to actually hardcast this as a thing, especially when we're running ancient tombs. So, like, we can hardcast this on turn three. But maybe we need more ways of kind of getting it into play in terms of having artifacts. And obviously, if we don't have the welder, we can't really put it in because the engineer doesn't do that. But then again, we can still just do dragon engine things until we get there, which is perfectly serviceable too. So yeah, I quite like this, de like this deck. I think it needs a little bit more time in the oven. And there's definitely a few different ways you can go down with it. I'm not a sort of red painter expert. There's some people who are. People like Lightwalker. And if you want to watch paint, to content i highly recommend lightwalker's channel i think he makes easily the best painter content on the internet it's not even close so definitely check out lightwalker i'll put a link in the description as well if you like painter content because you know it's always good to support people who make great content and he certainly does and i'd be interested to see what his thoughts on a build like this are and uh, maybe he'll play it soon as well but again i'm not an expert whereas callum who built this deck is definitely uh, on the painter expert spectrum and I would say uh, my thoughts on this are to be taken with a pinch of salt. But, you know, I play a lot of Legacy. I sort of understand how a lot of decks work, even if I'm not an expert in all of them. 
So I hope my thoughts on this one make sense to any of you painters out there who are looking at this one. And I hope you enjoy this one, even if you're not a painter player. Sideboard-wise, I did like some of the tools we had. I did feel the Fairy Macabre not being hard enough graveyard hate against the Dredge player. But is this a deck that wants to play Ley Lines? Is it a deck that wants to play Endurances? Possibly. Is it a deck that wants to play Surgicals? I'm not convinced it is. Like Maybe this is just the graveyard hate we play and we just hope it does enough against those matchups, maybe. And with that, I think we're done for the day. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. It does help the channel out, as I say all the time. Uh, and I do appreciate sort of seeing the counter going up and seeing more and more people playing Legacy. And some of the lovely comments you leave on my videos means a lot to me. And it's nice to see people enjoying what I think is easily the best format of Magic the Gathering, which is what it's all about. I don't, I don't play Legacy because... I'm trying to fill some sort of gap in the market of streamers or whatever. I play Legacy because I absolutely adore this format and have done for a very long time. And I hope that passion comes through and I hope you all love the format too. And I'm rambling and I need to go to bed because I'm very tired. So thank you so much for watching and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel a mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed Turbo Depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.